It's delicious. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It tastes like milk from a galaxy far, far away. All right, so I'm a big Star Wars fan. I am not um, a Star Wars fan. Like some of my friends are Star Wars fans. Like I don't know the name of every Kenner character that appears in the films. Uh, I think Slow Bulba. Aim, aim. Hey. Is a guy who's hanging out in the bar, and Snoo Snorfla is the dude in uh, Empire Strikes Back with the nostrils that go to his ears, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so those are wrong names. Uh, I know that there's uh, at the Moss Eisley Cantina is Satan and the Wolf Man are there. That's true. Uh, they they have names. The Satan is a Denisvorian, if I'm not mistaken. The Wolf Man might be a Wookiee, but I don't think he's a Wookiee. He's literally the Wolf Man. He's just like a costume. We need monsters. Put a monster in here. So over the summer, I had the extreme pleasure of going down to Disney World, and I stopped by uh, the. Uh, it's crazy. It just worked out this way. It was not planned, but I was there at like the first week it opened, of Galaxy's Edge. If you're up on like Disney blogs and like inside the the. the it didn't Disney nerd going on. So like apparently Disney is like not happy with the way Galaxy's Edge came out or something. And like a few reviewers, I, I, it was like a religious experience for me. I loved it. That was fantastic. It was amazing. It was like, you get to fly over the Millennium Falcon. They don't even have the second ride open yet. I'm blown away by it. I really think it, I had pretty low expectations. I'm not going to lie. It blew my expectations out of the water. In the original film, Star Wars A New Hope, we see Luke pour himself some blue milk, and for some reason, people have been talking about that daggone blue milk for forever. People have been making blue milk for forever. Uh, and it's very easy to make blue milk. You can add blue dye to milk if you want to just make some blue milk. And if you want to make a blue cocktail, you've got a lot of options out there. But so now that Disney owns Star Wars and Disney opened up Galaxy's Edge, they have blue milk there, and that makes their blue milk the official blue milk. That is the standard by which we must now measure all blue milks. Um, and if you don't agree with that, Disney will send you a cease and desist any minute now. They know your location. From their blue milk, I just wanna to say too, Disney's blue milk um, is a chilled drink. It's like a slushy, it comes from a slushy machine. It has a pretty unique flavor. It had a unique flavor that I had a hard time putting my finger on when I was there and I kept making my wife go back and buy more and more and more and more blue milk. And I was like, God damn, I, just, I gotta figure this out. I kept trying to figure it out, I couldn't figure it out. So I tried it and I tried it and I tried it and I, I kept trying to rack my brains around it. And then I found a photograph online that had the ingredients list uh, for the mix that they used to make the blue milk and it's a lot of ingredients, a lot of ingredients. And I think a lot of those ingredients have nothing to do with the flavor or the immediacy of the texture, but have to do with stabilizing it, turning it into a powder, shipping it, getting the color just right, all that stuff. Definitely for texture, there is some coconut oil. You will need a very scant amount of citric acid. You will need blue spirulina. This is a natural blue dye that um, comes from basically powderizing a, cy uh, a cyanalgy, I think, um, kind of like seaweed, sugar, and rice milk. For the primary flavor, I am convinced is orange blossom water. Uh, I know that the, the, the listing includes some powdered, extract of powdered dragon fruit, and I chased that down. I really figured that it had to be the dragon fruit that was a key ingredient. I didn't did not add up to what I remember that taste to be. But this pretty simple mix tastes dang near exactly what I remember blue milk to taste like. Of course, I don't have any on me to compare it against and they wouldn't let me set up my show in the Galaxy's Edge. I can't stand next to the counter and order samples to compare against as I'm mixing. As I said, this is sort of a slushy drink. It should be made in a slushy machine, which has a a refrigerated cylinder that comes in contact with the beverage and keeps things churning. It's basically an ice cream maker. Uh, so if you have an ice cream maker, that'd be another way to do this. That would take a very long time. Another thing you could do is we're gonna make the liquid mix. You could take that, freeze half of it into cubes, put 
let that freeze overnight or something like that. And take those cubes and take the remaining liquid, put them together in a blender and blend the heck out of it. That should get you there pretty good. Uh, I don't have time for that. We're gonna do it with a stand mixer and liquid nitrogen because that's how we roll on how to drink. Those are the other ways you would do this if you don't have liquid nitrogen. Th those are perfectly good ways to do it. But I have liquid nitrogen, what I'm gonna do. Okay, and I got my kitchen scale. Let's make some blue milk, everybody. So I wanna add 300 grams of my rice milk to this. I need 150 grams of sugar. So it's two to one ratio, ideally. 150 grams of sugar, tear that out. I'm gonna add 15 to 20 grams of my coconut oil. Um, you could heat this up and melt it. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, and one thing I wanna point out too is that this is a completely non-dairy beverage. So I think that was pretty important for Disney. I wanted to make sure that they weren't making something that would be not good for, well, I guess it would be shelf stable and not go bad, but also something that wouldn't put off people who were lactose intolerant. When I add three to six drops of orange flower water, I'm gonna pour this right off the side of my thumb. You could easily do this with an eyedropper. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is a potent flavor. So really that is a lot. I wanna add about one gram of citric acid. Uh, don't be afraid to come up a little short on this. I would say it's easy to put in too much here rather than too little. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna say a half a gram. We're gonna go with a half a gram of citric acid. Final ingredient is uh, what I have written down. I wrote down a scant amount of blue spirulina. This pigment, um, is all natural. It goes a long way. Um, we're not going to use enough to even register on the scale. This is a tenth gram scale, so it'll go to a tenth of a gram. And as soon as I dump that in, it's like spreading across the surface and taking over. This is, it's, it's powerful pigment. That's going to give us our blue milk. Too much, it'll be too dark. Um, there's a specific kind of like, you know, level of brightness we're going for with this. Okay, we're done with the scale. I'm going to blend this up with my immersion blender. You can use uh, whatever you have. Uh, for me, this is probably the best bet to go. And that's really, we're gonna get our sugar dissolved, all of our ingredients dissolved that way, and our coconut oil, um, even though there's a big frothy head of it sitting on top now, is largely integrated. Uh, I'm gonna transfer that to my stand mixer. Lock that, I'm gonna set that to two. I'm gonna set that to a two. And now I wanna add my liquid nitrogen. I'm gonna tell you, if you're doing it this way, it, I worked on this a lot last night. It takes a lot more than you think, but it will make, Pretty much instant ice cream or something uh, in, in our case we're going for like instant slushy and don't be afraid to um, if you're going the liquid nitrogen route don't be afraid to uh, pour some in check your consistency add some more I'm standing back just slightly because you can see these little streaks coming out. That is bubbles of liquid nitrogen popping out. It's probably the only real risk associated with this technique. It's fine if it gets on my skin, I just don't want any of my eyes. If it gets on your skin, it'll just bounce off. I think we're about halfway there. Yeah, it's starting to thicken. Come on, baby, hold together. You can hear it getting thick though. I think the hyperdrive motivator on this mixer is a little fishy. But we've done it. All right, so uh, this is done. Let's, uh, let's get it out of there. Oh, look at that. Um, I'm gonna put it in this highball glass, I think. I'm just gonna scrape that off, scrape that down the sides. This is perhaps the least elegant pour we've ever done on the show. Tasting notes for the blue milk. Perfect, <laughs> nailed it. It is sweet and just a, a hint tart, just a little bit. It is coconutty and floral 
and a little bit citrusy and tough to put your finger on, to be honest. It doesn't really, um, and that was one of the things I was super pleased with when I was at Galaxy's Edge was that I felt like it didn't really taste like anything from Earth. You know, it, it's unique. And we really, I think, nailed it. I think that the orange blossom water is key here. That orange blossom water plus some coconut flavor from the coconut oil. The rice milk is pretty neutral. It just really is kind of a substrate for everything else. Plus the sweetness, which is undeniably like the main ingredient, right? That really does it. That gets you there. The citric acid, uh, I've tried it with it and without it. I like it both ways, actually. I think that it's a perfectly good drink without the citric acid. And depending on my depending on my mood, I might like it more one way or the other. It doesn't change the appearance of the drink at all. It's just a, you know, gram, half a gram. We went with a half a gram here, and you get it. You don't need much for this to taste pretty citricky. Uh, citricky. For this to taste pretty citrusy. The right balance, it just sort of helps unify the flavors and uh, helps you, it's like a flavor enhancer, like a salt in something, like it brings out flavors. The blue milk, as done at Galaxy's Edge. My watches are provided by Crown & Caliber. If you're interested in watches, why don't you check them out? They're in the pinned comment right beneath me. My Instagram is at how to drink. My Twitter is at how to drink. My Patreon is at patreon.com slash how to drink. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. I've been from one side of the galaxy to the other, and I've never seen anything make me believe that there's some unifying force. Why does he do that? Why does he stretch out? Such a lady killer. <sighs> There's some unifying force that ties us all together. Guy knew what he was doing. Hey, costume, you think you could make my uh, tunic a little more low cut? You think you could pull that off for me? Bet they could. Those pants, tighten them up. <laughs> he knew what he was about. That worked. That worked for him. That sh movie transcended genders because of him. They wanted to see that.